Hey, today's fun is going to be uh, spark plugs on a uh, Mercedes CLK 320 and this would apply to any of the Mercedes models using the, I think it's the M112 engine family uh, V6 uh, twin spark uh, engine. Uh, as you probably know these have, or maybe you don't know, uh, it's a it's a V6 but there are two spark plugs per cylinder, meaning 12 spark plugs in total. And uh, these plugs only are required to be changed about every 160,000 kilometers, 100,000 miles approximately. So they're not the easiest to get to. Uh, it's about an hour to do these, maybe a little longer. A um, bit of a pain in the ass, but not too bad. So anyway, we're going to start by uh, opening the hood, propping it all the way to the second position so it's straight up and down so you got room to move. Remove the engine cover. Come on off you. I have to mount this camera on my tripod and stuff and I will be back in a few minutes. Okay, in order to access the plugs on the passenger side, uh, you're going to have to remove the air filter box and the uh, the bellows leading into it. So first thing is just to unplug the MAF sensor. You just squeeze in these little tabs. There's two tabs on the side, squeeze them in, pull it away, and tuck that down out of the way. And there's a little ring at the end of the rubber bellows here where it connects to the uh, the other part of the intake manifold and you can simply pull on that ring it's a bit of a bitch <laughs> and pop that off and then pull the whole air box up and out sorry got to remove the air Take snorkel from above the air box that goes into the grill. Excuse me if I yawn today. I'm begged and lift the whole air box out. So now you see you have access to the plugs on the passenger side. Uh, it's going to be a little bit different for um, S Class, the S320, the E320. Uh, this is a again a CLK320, so there's going to be different, slight different uh, access problems on each one. The CLK, you do need to remove this in order to get to the plugs on this side. The other side is a little bit, a little bit tighter on the driver's side, but you can still get to it. You can still get to them without. Uh, I've seen some people say you have to jack up the engine. Um, you know what? I haven't changed plugs on this, so it's possible that you do. I don't think you do. I think you can get to them without it, but uh, we'll see. And uh, next we're just going to mark our plugs before we move the coil, so I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so we can see here there's there's three coil packs, one, two, three, and each coil pack controls two plugs on each cylinder. And you want to mark, or I do anyway, I mean you could probably remember them. I'm going to mark them just in case, and it's probably a good idea. It's marked A and B, you can see on the on the coil pack. But um, just in case you don't get uh, to mixed up, the top one's going to go to the left plug on that cylinder. The bottom one's going to go to the rightmost plug on that cylinder. But I'm just going to put an L on each of these ones just for the hell of it in case my brain farts and explodes because I'm going to be pulling the coil packs off in order to... You're never going to get past them if you don't. So I'm going to do that on both sides and be back in a minute. So you can see again we're on the driver's side. Uh, of the car and there's an, I mean this is going to be the opposite if you're in Europe or if not in your, all of Europe but in uh, if you drive on the right side um, the L is going to be the leftmost plug on the top uh, the, the top plug wire is going to go on the leftmost plug on uh, on this side but if you go to the bank on the other side you can see the topmost plug goes to the right plug the top wire top wire again goes to the right plug so you've marked those with an R. Okay, so all the coil packs are hooked on, or bolted on, with a T25 Torx. Um, you can use a socket, I've got a socket, but this is just as easy. Um, I mean, if you don't have Torx sockets, but you do have access to little Torx wrenches, they're just as easy, they're not on there hard. And you're just going to... Oh, freezing out, my hands are freaking... 
can't feel anything, but my hands are starting to numb up. <laughs> so you're just going to loosen all three bolts. And I'm going to do that on both sides. And then we're going to unhook the plug wires and back in a minute. So I'm just going to un unbolt all those six bolts and back in a second. Okay, I was wrong. You can get most of the plug wires, or a lot of the plug wires off without tilting the engine up, but <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a lot easier tilting the engine up. So I'm just going to remove the lower uh, engine mount bolt on each side as I tilt it up one at a time, uh, each side at a time when I'm doing it. Right now I'm doing the left side, or the driver's side. Um, right here in the front control arm, the mount for the front control arm are, there's, is, there's a hole, the 13 millimeter bolt is in there. I can find it without looking. <laughs> Don't want to move my fat head in front of you. Now we're just going to take that 13 mil bolt out. Mounting bolt for the uh, engine mount on that side, and I'm gonna have to take off the splash shield so I can jack up the engine a little bit. Uh, anyway, back in a second. That's for eight millimeter bolts. So I'll be back in one second. Uh, I'm sure you guys know how to. I've got every other video that I've done under the car. You gotta take off the splash shield almost. So back in a minute. Turn off camera. Okay, the car is obviously on a jack stand, and I'm. Um, going to be jacking up under the oil pan. I'm only not going to be putting a lot of pressure on it, I'm putting the weight of the car on it, so it's okay. I use a hockey puck as a, um, a rubber buffer between the jack stand and the, or the jack and the anything I'm jacking against. It's a good uh, bumper. And I'm just going to raise the engine a little bit on that side for better access. There we go. And now we'll easily be able to get... Damn it, sometimes the internet's right. <laughs> be able to pull these plug wires off and not have to dis disconnect them from the coils. I was going to originally disconnect them from the coils first um, so I could pop the coils up out of the way and then get to the plug wires, but it's going to be easier just to unplug the plug wires and uh, lift the whole coils and plug wires up and off. Uh, once the plugs are unhooked. So let's unhook the plugs and be back in a minute. Uh, make sure when you unhook them, I do have one unhooked, the front one, obviously very easy to get out. As you can see, it's it's a long uh, metal end on the plug wire. Don't pull by the wire. Pull only by the metal part. Um, if you have to put any uh, grip on it or anything, use a pair of, uh, if you have spark plug pullers, but they're going to be hard to get in there anyway. But if you take a pair of like needle nose and stick them in and kind of pry out you can do that as well so let's get all those off and back in a minute okay now that you've got the engine jacked up and unplug the coil packs uh, you don't only have to un sorry unplug the front too you'll see the third one's got a little uh, tie wrap around it it's pointless to even take the tie wrap off because once you take the first two off then the the third one will just stay connected to the wiring and you can just leave it there um, there's no real harm in pulling them off and as long as you keep them separated. Um, these wires you can't really mix up. I mean, you, you, you can't, they, they can't possibly stretch between where they're supposed to go. So anyway, you unplug and then obviously I can't do this with one hand. You know, move the coil pack over and then you'll be able to reach down and grab the spark plugs and pull them out. And again, don't pull by the wire, pull by the, uh, the metal base. This one's a real bitch. <laughs> this one is on there. <laughs> there we go. Okay, just showing you how to do this with the um, with bent nose needle nose or a regular needle nose. You can do this with. Um, I just use these ones because they're longer. Um, 
and basically just grabbing the end, not hard. Well, obviously it'd be going the other way, sorry. The end of the boot, grabbing it this way and then prying slightly against the head and it'll pop it off. These are really, really, really tough plug boots to get off. Um, I don't think I've ever taken ones off tougher. Um, the girlfriend's E320 was never this hard. Um, I guess because it's a CLK class, there's a lot less room and just a lot harder to get in there. But um, anyway, these are not nice to take off for the first time. I don't think they've ever been done. Uh, 340,000 Ks, I don't think these have been off. Uh, we'll know when the spark plugs come out. So uh, anyway, 12 of these suckers, it's going to take a while. I've got uh, two, four, six off. So back in a second. Okay, all three coils off and six spark plug boots off. That took about 45 minutes to seize the back one. Wow, what a bitch. Um, <laughs> if you have access to the Mercedes specific spark plug remover, it's probably a good time to use it. This thing, I, I don't know how it works though. I don't know, and I, I've never used one. I've used regular spark plug boot removers. They don't work on this one because uh, you can't grab it and pull. <laughs> so first plug out of the any bet that these are probably the original plugs? I wouldn't doubt it. Bosch Platinums. Uh, I'm using Denso TTs. Actually, if I used the Iridiums in Canada, if I bought them in Canada, it would be over $260 for the Iridium plugs. Uh, but these are the Denso TT um, uh, Platinum and Titanium tip. And that's what I'm going to be replacing them with. Um, putting the plugs in is pretty simple. It's a, it's a little tough to work your hands in there. I'm not going to bother you showing replacing 12 plugs because it'd just be a two hour long video. This is actually, replacing these plugs is going to be take you quite a while if uh, those plug wires have never been off. Um, they're kind of a bitch and unless someone's actually taken this vehicle to the dealership to have them do it. As with any spark plug when you're putting them in, never put them in with the wrench. Never use a ratchet to initially put them in, torque them in put them in by hand to make sure that you're not cross-threading them because cross-threading means no fun. You only do the final tightening with the wrench and basically that's as tight as I can get it by finger and then I will put 10 pound feet of torque on with uh, a torque wrench or as I've said before grab the center of the ratchet when you're holding the ratchet grab it and hold it by center and twist and it will generally give you about 10 to 12 pound feet of torque um, when putting a plug on. Anyway, I'm going to do all six of these on this side. Um, I got a couple other things to show you. There's not a heck of a lot. Um, -da 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 -da. Uh, back in. Okay, I'm losing light here. This is going to probably take me another hour because I haven't really I haven't finished putting all the plugs in on the driver's side, and I haven't even started taking them out of the passenger side. Passenger side is easier access than the driver's side, so it's going to be a little easier. Other than that, everything is basically the same. Um, the one thing I do want to show you is greasing your boots for the new plugs. Now, some people just fill up the boot full of grease. Um, I'm going to use electrical contract cleaner, put it on one of the old plugs, and just kind of wipe it around the old plug. And insert that into one of the boots. And, I don't know if you can see that, yeah, it's right in front of you. And goop it around. And that's the only way you want to grease your plug boots, because I've seen people, they'll just put a big glob in there, and then when you go to put your plug in, it'll hydraulically lock, and it'll keep popping the boot off of the plug. So, doing it that way gets the grease on the actual grommet inside and it won't lock up and uh, and provide bad contact, which is what can happen a lot of times when you do it, uh, when you just fill up the plug boots with grease. Um, I'm just using um, uh, a corrosion pre preventative um, electrical contact grease, the stuff that you put in electrical connections. Okay, so here's the six horsemen of the apocalypse that were riding in the driver's side of my car. Nice, huh? Here's the new Platinum TT plug gap is a huge, obviously this plug gap on these old plugs is worn down, it's almost double what the plug gap is on this titanium tip. Um, anyway, I'm just going to continue putting these in, this one's yellow because that's when I was using up to grease up the boots. Um, 
anyway almost done putting doing this side about an hour to do uh, per side it, it appears on this car so give yourself some time um, back in a little bit okay everything going back together now we've got the back coil pack on and the two plug wires on the, on the rear coil and we're just working on the other two right now I just wanted to add that um, yeah these are a bitch to push these plug wires in but make sure when you push the plug wire over the plug this is what I mean I want to demonstrate this too when you even the tiniest bit amount of grease in there see that because it's such a good seal it's pushing back <laughs> all on its own so make sure you snap them in they have got to pop on this is gonna ugh. so anyway when you when just to demonstrate when you blast those full of grease that's what happens but way more extreme and you end up with uh, plug wires popping off I've seen it happen a million times when people too much put too much grease in there so anyway um, lube up the boots but lube them up uh, gently with an old plug okay coils going back in uh, one last thing uh, I did say it was a T25, I think, um, but it's a T30. Um, I had a T30 the whole time, but for some reason I called it a 25. Uh, tighten these coil packs down, uh, hand tight, and then maybe an eighth of a turn after. You're not putting a ton of torque on them. You don't want to split them and crack them. They're like 150, 200 bucks a piece. So they're all the same. All three coils are the same. All six, sorry, coils are the same. Um, and again, make sure you're, you've marked them left and right so you know which, co which plug is which. Make sure to snap the plug boots on properly. Okay, everything's back together now. Um, on this intake manifold, uh, the ring by the rubber uh, bellows, just make sure this is around uh, nice and snug. Put it in at the bottom first, slip the bottom or slip the top over, uh, clip it on, and then spin it to make sure it's not unhooking anywhere, which it's not. So that's good. Check everything uh, for tightness and everything. Uh, one one word, you do have to jack up both sides from the bottom. Remove both uh, lower bolts from both engine mounts to get to get up. You can actually reach the bolts on the dry, on the passenger side. You can reach the the plug wires. Yeah, I, I don't know. I can't get them off without having the car jacked up. Just that couple of extra inches, about three inches of space, uh, uh, seems to make the difference. Um, I tried to see if I could get them off without jacking, uh, uh, without taking out the engine mount on the passenger side. Uh, not possible for me anyway. Um, but uh, but uh, but uh, what else? Uh, whatever you do, don't, don't take both engine mount bolts off at the same time, thinking that's going to save you some time. Go under there and take them both off. No, don't do it. Um, uh, one side at a time only, because obviously the engine needs some support. If you start jacking it up. Um, without one engine mount on, yeah, you're going to have problems. If the engine tips to the side too much, you could pinch wires, you could crush hoses, uh, all kinds of things could happen that are not really fun. So don't do that one side at a time. I um, uh, hope I'm not rambling here. I probably am. I usually do. Um, anyway, thanks for watching again. Um, thanks.